we will start this course with coupling. So we have two types of coupling. Loose coupling and tight coupling. Loose coupling is good, tight coupling should be avoided. Imagine that you work on a project and you have to change class A. However, because class A is interconnected with class B, when you change A, you somehow break class B and you have seen this a lot. <laughs> so you want to implement a new feature or you want to change an existing feature and you find out that there is a bug because of that change. And we do not want bugs in our application. So why is that? Well, most probably your code is tight coupled, so that's why you get bugs. So that means that your classes are highly dependent on one another. As a result, when you change a class, you suddenly break another. So loose coupling means that classes in a system are not tight coupled, so you of course want to prefer loose coupling and not tight coupled, so you want to make your system as loose coupled as you can. We can achieve loose coupling with the single responsibility principle, SRP, and separation of concerns. So loose coupling is not only about preventing bugs, even though a system with a loose coupling architecture is less likely to introduce bugs, loose coupling makes the system more extendable as well. All right, enough with the theory, I will start writing some very, very bad uh, by the code. So the code at this moment will be written in a tight coupled approach. In the next video, we will see how we can change bad code to good code. And we call that refactoring. So suppose we have a travel agency and you work there as a developer and you are asked to implement traveling by car. First of all, I will actually go ahead and create a new directory here. So this is video number two, and we are talking about tight coupling. Okay, so what classes do we need? We need a class car and a class traveler. Okay, so in the class car, I need a function and I will call it start and all I have to do for now is to echo using a car that's all actually we can we can add also a new line so like that okay now the traveler is obviously the one who needs the car right so in the traveler class we create a function that we are going to call it travel so what options do we have at this moment to travel? Well, we can travel only by car. So we can say vehicle equals to new car. And of course, we have to call the start function in the car class. So vehicle start. Okay, our code at this point should be bad. And actually it is bad because we create a new car object here inside the travel function, which is of course part of the traveler class. So do you see the problem here? The class traveler is tight coupled with the class car. Why? Because we are creating a car object inside the travel function. So vehicle is an instance of class car. And at this point, the traveler class already does way too much. The traveler in order to travel, he must create a new car object first. Before we continue, let's run the code. So I will create an index file. So index, and we also have to autoload the classes. So SPL, autoload register uh, function. So we have the class name. Of course, this should be inside here. Okay. So include class name dot PHP. Excellent. So now we have, uh, we are auto loading the classes and we actually also need a dot here. And all I have to do now is to create a new traveler and call the travel function. So if I go to my terminal and we have to move to this folder, and I run this, so php index.php, 
of course you get using a car. Okay, so let's make this example a bit more complicated to understand how bad this code inside the traveler class is and how coupled this traveler class actually is. So Eric, your boss, I actually forgot to introduce Eric to you. Eric is your boss and Eric is asking to implement traveling by airplane as well. Probably he made a lot of money and now wants to expand his business. So step one, of course, is to go and create a new class and call it airplane. So airplane, airplane. So using an airplane. So the idea is still the same. We have the airplane class and the start function. We just change the, uh, the text here to airplane and not car. So this is step one. Step two, well, in step two, things get a bit wild. Now, damn it. I mean, how are you supposed to implement traveling by airplane in this code, right? You might ask him why. Well, first of all, can you actually extend this application and implement traveling by an airplane? Of course you can. However, the thing here is not whether we can expand the system and implement traveling by airplane. The thing here is that the traveler class is already coupled with the car class. And now, now we are asked to make this class even more coupled by adding the airplane class here. In any case, let's do it. Uh, first of all, we need to decide what type of vehicle we need. So here we can store the type. And now we can actually say protected vehicle and remove it from here. So if type is equal to car, then this vehicle is equal to a new car. Else if type equals to airplane, then this vehicle is equal to new airplane. Okay. And of course we have to call this vehicle start. Okay, so let's go back to the index in order to run this. So now, of course, the travel class expects a type. So we can say, we can say airplane in order to travel by airplane. And if I go back to this, I run this. And of course, we get using an airplane. Good. So the code works and you can expand the application. And if the client wants uh, a new type of vehicle, all you have to do is to go here and create a new else if with the new type. However, the more types you add, the more tightly coupled your traveler class becomes. The traveler class already depends on the car class. And by adding the airplane, it now also depends on an airplane. And if you want to add a third option to travel, it will depend on three separate classes and you do not want that. In the next video, we will see how we can convert this tight coupled code to loose coupled.